Hi, my name is Paul Tranny. I'm a creative cloud evangelist for Adobe, and uh, I'm actually going to share with you some awesome new features in Creative Cloud. What are some of the things that you would show off to people who are interested or maybe you've never heard of Adobe CC to kind of get them to check it out? Yeah, Creative Cloud. Um, well, I'd first point them to the website, and the thing is, is they don't really have to say pick products like they used to used to have to back in the day it's like they get creative cloud so they get everything at their fingertips they can install the video products web uh, photoshop and usually that's usually what gets people interested is is photoshop uh, and there's a ton of features available in photoshop even even easy ones that you could use right away because chances are i know i have a ton of blurry photos on my computer, you know, where you have kind of moved your, you know, moved your, either your iPhone when you're taking a picture or whatever, and we basically have the ability to uh, do a, a camera shake reduction, uh, also known as de-blur is uh, sort of the slang term for it. Uh, and that will take out uh, any sort of shake that happens or any sort of nudge uh, when you're taking a photo. Um, so how big of a deal is de-blur? Like if someone, uh, you know, is this is this technology that's kind of been around for a while, or is this, you know, is this kind of like the new hot mm -hmm. thing? Uh, it is the new hot thing. I think it's the, it's the wow factor. Like again, I can show it to you right now. You'd be impressed with what it does, and you can use it when you are in those cases. But um, chances are, professional photographers they're probably not going to take photos like that. You know, so there's other sort of more production worthy uh, features might not be as sexy, like the ability just to upsample an image, because chances are, again, might have a small image, how do we upsample that? And that upsample algorithm is a, lo a lot better, it does a great job, and smart sharpen little things, we're taking tools that you might know and love, and we've actually, uh, you know, reworked them. So at Adobe Max earlier this year, one of the cool features that I was most interested in was uh, kind of like this perspective altering uh, technology. Um, you showed some of it in Sneaks, but you also there's also some of it that exists in CC. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're we're constantly working on that, and uh, lens correction is what you can have access to today. And that is if you're you know using a lens that that does provide distortion, and you didn't want that distortion, you can jump in there, and uh, Photoshop can get that data on that particular photo can tell what lens was used, what camera was used, go ahead and correct that photo, adjust it any way you want to get really the look you want. And what you can do is uh, that's available in Camera Raw, and I would like to point out that Camera Raw is in Photoshop as a filter. So I can have a layer and I can have Camera Raw adjustments, whether it's lens correction or any sort of color correction on that specific layer, which is just really cool, really great for photographers. We've added Lightroom to Creative Cloud. We're up to Lightroom version 5. If you're not familiar with it, uh, it's basically a tool that uh, professional photographers use. It's an app. It enables you to organize all your photos, do some uh, editing to your photos, but it's non-destructive, so it keeps your original file, which is great, so the ability to organize and uh, manipulate your photos. And then if you want to do any fine-tuned manipulation, you can jump directly into Photoshop from Lightroom and do any further manipulation you want to do. Uh, so again, Lightroom is part of Creative Cloud, I think is, is pretty cool. And uh, to be honest with you, I use it quite a bit since I travel a lot. I'm in that program more often than not, to be honest with you. Um, so, one of, so Lightroom and a few of the others, such as After Effects and things, um, sound actually supplementary to some of the bigger apps like Photoshop and Premiere. And um, what, uh, but running running like Photoshop and Premiere are actually like uh, memory intensive. Mm -hmm. um, does uh, does having these these other apps kind of running in conjunction? Does that is that like a is there a performance hit or are they kind of designed to not you know, hurt you. <laughs> not yeah. slow you, slow down yeah. my poor little Mac. Yeah, I know, I'm, I hear you, but uh, chances are if you're, I would like to say, oh yeah, running them both together and there's no performance hit, but there definitely is going to be. Luckily, if you're running, say, Photoshop and Premiere Pro or uh, Photoshop and After Effects, chances are you're doing high-end high -end work, video work, whatever the case may be, so hopefully you have like a machine that can handle that, but uh, in general, no, you can you can have them running at the same time or not. You even have access to 
Uh, the CS6 apps, by the way. So since we're talking about running apps multiple at the same time, I can run CS6, Photoshop CS6 at the same time as I'd, I'd run Photoshop CC, if I ever wanted just, to. Just because. Just because, just to show that you can. Uh, but again, it's nice as, creative, as a Creative Cloud member, you can install what you want. You don't have to install all the video stuff, or if you want to use After Effects, you can, or Lightroom. Again, some of these apps that I never thought I'd really be using, I actually am using a lot more than expected. One of them you might be familiar with is Cooler. So I have the Cooler app on my phone and it allows me to, if again I'm inspired by any sort of colors or your shirt, I can go ahead and capture the colors of that, manipulate it, and then sync it to my desktop, sync it into Illustrator. Uh, since you've synced all these colors to Illustrator, it's nice that once I'm in Illustrator, I can start to work with its new features. One of them being the touch type tool. So uh, if you are a designer that has, say, uh, a Cintiq monitor that uh, has, has touch-enabled features, uh, or even, say, uh, Microsoft Windows Surface, well, then I can take advantage of manipulating that type. But I don't need to have those uh, new devices, if you will, or new screens. I can actually just use it right in here. In Illustrator, I can manipulate text as you'd expect. So, like everybody's heard of, uh, you know, Illustrator, Photoshop, you know, InDesign, but really we've added more apps to Creative Cloud. One of those being Muse. It's I have a lot of fun in it because it enables me to create a website without writing any code. It's literally like page layout. Uh, almost like drag and drop widgets, galleries, even creating a contact form, and I don't have to write uh, any code on the back end to really get that to work. And some of the cool new features is it's really taking cues from what's hot these days uh, when it comes to uh, web design, which is parallax, when things move at different rates on the screen, I can easily take advantage of that uh, in Muse as well. It's just really powerful. And as a Creative Cloud member, you can publish up to five sites. It doesn't cost you any money. You just get it as part of your Creative Cloud membership, which is really cool. So honestly, I just scratched the surface with these various apps and what they can do. And uh, hopefully your takeaway is you don't need to be a high-end production company to take advantage of uh, everything that Creative Cloud has to offer.